Okay, so like, what if a baby was also a lamb? I don't know, is that scary? Are you scared by that? A lamb baby? Is that anything? That's what the movie Lamb sets out to answer, and it didn't. So... This one... The, mo the movie Lamb... I'll be straight up with you. I wanted to review this movie because I thought it would be something I could compare to Midsommar, and that way I could talk about Midsommar, have Midsommar in the keywords, get some clicks out of that. That's basically all I wanted. Some of that Midsommar heat. The trailer made it look a lot more similar to Midsommar than it actually is, which is not at all. It, it does take place in a Nordic country, and there's a scene where a character wears a flower crown, but that's where the comparisons end. I had anticipated that somewhat, and I thought, at the very least, you know, it's gonna have that A24 slow burn horror that I love. If nothing else, I'll get that, right? I did. Oh boy. I did. Lamb reads almost like a parody of A24, like an SNL sketch of what A24 movies are like. Watching it is what I imagine people who don't like A24 movies must feel like when they watch them. It was long, slow, and I gotta be honest, pretty pointless. I do not understand this movie. I understand the story. I saw what happened on screen. All of that was quite clear to me. But I don't have the first clue what any of it means, couldn't tell you. The movie opens with some kind of breathy monster, perhaps a devil or a goblin of some kind, spooking some horses and making its way into a barn full of sheeps. Now you're probably wondering, is that monster going to kill the sheeps? And I've got good news and bad news. There's then a lengthy sequence where farmers Maria and her husband Ingvar help some sheeps give birth and it's real sheep births on screen. Didn't care for that. I don't like it. I don't like looking at it. I didn't like seeing it. I don't know. I, that's not the movie's problem. That's my problem, but still. There's also a scene where I think they legitimately put a tag in a real sheep's ear. And again, didn't love that. Wasn't a fan of that. Don't know how I feel about that at all. And then one of the sheeps gives birth to something that surprises them. They have a long reaction that I rewound and watched again because I thought I had missed a reveal, but actually it takes like 20 more fucking minutes for that reveal to come. And it's that the baby sheep is half human. Maria and Ingvar adopt it, raise it as their daughter, and name her Ada after a child they previously lost somehow. It's not specified how. At no point does anyone ask the, I think, most obvious question here. Hey Ingvar, you fuck a sheep bro? Because I see a half-human, half-sheep, and no one else around. You fuck the sheep? Now, we, the audience, know it was the goblin that had sex with the sheep, but none of the characters question this, and that's strange. In the, in the fiction they have constructed, nobody stops to think, hey, well, what's, how come there's a sheep baby? How come? Where'd that happen? Was, what, what, who's, who's the dad of the sheep baby? What's going on with the sheep baby? And I know, I'm being too literal here. Clearly the film takes place in some sort of heightened reality where Maria's grief over losing her child manifests into something or other. I don't know. I don't know what any of this means. But I can't help but look at the film extremely literally because it's very opaque with whatever it's trying to say subtextually. So then Ingvar's brother Peter shows up and he thinks it's super fucked up that they have this lamb baby. Again though, never asks, Hey, Ingvar, did you fuck a sheep? Please tell me if you fucked a sheep. I must know the answer to this. Peter insists that Ada is an animal and not a child, and almost shoots her before deciding to be cool about it for like a fucking second. Okay, now hopefully this is the part where I put spoilers in the title because let's just talk about everything that happens in this movie. Let's just discuss the entire story of the film Lamb. Ada's biological mother, a sheep, is following her around and trying to lure her back outside to live amongst the sheeps. But Maria puts an end to that by fucking shooting her in the dome piece. Peter witnesses this and tries to rekindle an affair with Maria who shoots him down, not unlike she shot the sheep. But Peter is a real scumbag and he tries to blackmail Maria into having sex with him by threatening to tell Ada about her mother's murder. So she locks him in a room and then kicks him out of the house, drives him to the bus stop. Meanwhile, the goblin's running around, kills the family dog. Of course the dog dies. Ingvar and Ada go out to fix the family tractor, but the monster shows up and it's not a goblin, it turns out. It's a goat man who shoots Ingvar and takes Ada away. And then Maria shows up and she's sad about it. And she takes a deep breath. The end. And what does any of that mean? I don't know. I could not tell you. There's a lot of visual elements that suggest some sort of meaning, 
but I can't parse it whatsoever. For example, there are a lot of open doors in the movie, characters going from one place to another and just leaving the door open, or sitting around with the door open as danger lurks just outside, or standing in the middle of the frame like with a door frame around them. What do the doors represent? Possibility? You know, like, God never closes a window without opening a door? Like, what could... And that tracks, right? Because Maria says that she wants to have a, a new start with Ada. So that's... it's about... maybe it's possibility, maybe. But also the open door means threats can just waltz in. So d does it represent vulnerability or the way that Maria and Ingvar have invited danger into their lives by adopting Ada or by letting Peter stay with them? I don't know, because it doesn't feel like those decisions have big consequences. It feels like just Ingvar gets shot by a goat man, and that doesn't really feel like it connects to any of those themes. There's clearly something in the story about holding on to the past, like, they named their goat baby Ada after a child they lost, and yes, it's Ada, not Ada. They're Icelandic, they pronounce it Ada. If they say Ada a lot in the movie, just trust me on this one. There are lingering shots of old photos. They spend a conspicuous amount of time cleaning up stuff out of their barn, while Peter reminisces about all the memories it brings back. They watch a VHS of Peter's music video, and it's clearly not a VHS. Just pause on the thematic discussion here. It's widescreen and in high definition. It's clearly not a VHS. I don't know why they shot it so that she's putting a VHS into a VCR and he even comments that they're watching a VHS. Really took me out of the movie. Don't know why they did that. Bothered me more than I can express. So what? Is holding on to the past bad? Why? Is it like adopting a lamb baby? Is that why holding on to the past is bad? There seems to be a kind of discussion about whether happiness that is constructed from unconventional or difficult to understand sources is genuine or delusional. We're clearly meant to be unnerved by the way that Maria and Ingvar treat Ada like a human and act like nothing is amiss, but why though? Ada is clearly intelligent, thoughtful, and kind. In that situation, it does feel like it would be the logical thing to do to treat her like a human child. And obviously the movie is screaming at you that no, they shouldn't, it's bad, but how come? How come though? There is clearly some sort of lamb side, human side conflict going on in Ada's mind. She sees a photo of sheep parting and has a strong reaction to it. Upon seeing her biological father for the first time, she runs to look at herself in the mirror and the mirror conspicuously just shows her face, just the lamb part and not any of the human parts. And for the first time she's forced to confront, oh shit, I'm a lamb though. And Peter is initially conflicted about Ada being just an animal and not a child, and he feeds her grass, and she's like, fuck yeah, grass. So she can be influenced to act more like sheep or more like a child. I don't know. What does any of that mean? And then Peter tries to kill her in the same way that Maria killed Ada's mother, who is clearly a sheep. That's a very obvious parallel. That's how sheep die. They die when a human shoots them with a gun, but he can't do it because now he's come to see Ada as a human child, and thus not something you would shoot with a gun, hopefully. Then Ingvar, who is a human, is shot by a sheep man with the same gun, blurring the lines between sheep and person and gun. What is animal? What is human? What do you shoot with your really quiet rifle? So were Maria and Ingvar delusional to try to be happy with Ada? The movie seems to be telling us, yes, they are, but showing us that they are not. That taking Ada away from her biological parents is a theft, a kind of kidnapping. Well, a kid is a goat, not a sheep, but you get it. At the same time, she's very clearly more human than animal, and it would be unreasonable to expect that she live in a barn with sheep. Even if her sheep mom can't accept that, the sheep mom doesn't have any context for that type of thing. Does she really belong in the human world? Yeah, kind of seems like she does actually. She eats cereal, she watches TV. She's clearly afraid and traumatized when nature reclaims her. This whole fucking thing makes my brain itch. I know there's meant to be something happening here. The movie is far too deliberate to not be at least trying to tell me something, but what the fuck is it? And the Ram Man represents like nature or whatever. And nature reclaimed what Maria and Ingvar took from nature, which... What? They're, they're farmers. They live on a big farmland. They don't seem to be destructive towards nature. They birth a bunch of sheep, which to me seems like filmic language for caring about animals. Nothing about the movie implies they're at all destructive to nature beyond, like, being farmers who raise sheep. Are we meant to condemn them for that? Is it about the commodification of animals by farmers? Because they don't do any farm stuff. They don't shear the sheep. 
They don't kill the sheep, they don't milk the sheep, they don't do nothing. The, the only farm-related stuff they do seems to be birthing sheep and feeding sheep and occasionally herding them in fields. It, it, none of that makes me feel like nature must take its revenge upon them. If it's meant to be against animal agriculture, which I think would be a fine theme for a movie, the, it, they didn't d talk about it at all or do anything with that. Okay, so how about this though? Ada is conceived on Christmas Day, and the lamb is another name for Jizo, right? And Ada's born in a barn, not unlike a manger. Is there something there? And 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 rather than an immaculate conception, Ada is born from a sheep man fucking a sheep, which is, in my opinion, extremely immaculate. So that's like the it could like the devil, right? Because the devil has horns. Usually not sheep horns though, usually goat horns, so. And Ada doesn't really do anything Christ-like. Her story doesn't really mirror Jizo, so I don't know. Normally, I don't think it would bother me that I miss the subtext of a movie so badly. I do it all the time, except that there's really nothing else to this movie. It's, the, the, the text is nothing. There's virtually no dialogue. You could fit every word spoken onto a single page. Did you notice that I managed to condense this two hour movie into like 20 seconds worth of things that happened? I, like sure there's, there's an atmosphere of looming dread, I guess, but it plods along so slowly that you're just waiting for a tragedy to happen so you can be done. You can't get attached to the characters because it is telegraphed from a mile away that there's simply no way they could get a happy ending. So about an hour in, you're like, oh my God, die already. Never before have I seen this kind of reverse storytelling alchemy, where the feeling that something bad is going to happen to the characters deflates the tension. And it's pretty. It all looks really nice. I wouldn't want to not use that footage either, but fucking come on, we don't need to see another beautiful mountain. There was a dissolve in Lamb that took so long, and I'm not kidding when I say this, this is not me exaggerating for effect. I genuinely thought my monitor was broken. And why? It's just a shot of a character walking around that dissolved to another shot of a different character walking around. And it went on and on and on and on. Every shot in this movie lingers a little longer than you feel like it should. Like there was something happening somewhere on screen where you weren't looking and you missed it. At the end of this, I feel like I didn't watch this movie. I feel like I was looking at something else while a movie played just out of sight. I love slow burn horror, and this was definitely slow, but not a lot of burn. And I feel bad because maybe there's something really important going on beneath the surface here, but what is it? I feel like the only thing I have to criticize is like the, the literal events of the story, which don't matter. Of course the story doesn't make sense. It's an analogy for something, but if you can't decipher that analogy, you're just left with something that feels so empty and so pointless, but made with such skill and passion that you're just so confused. So here's my recommendation to you. If you're smarter than I am, watch Lamb. Maybe you'll get something out of it that I didn't. I couldn't tell you what. I couldn't tell you if there is something there. Maybe you'll watch it and go, oh no, it's nothing. The reason you couldn't parse it out is because nothing is here. I don't know. But if your brain is roughly the size of mine, or smaller even, if that's somehow possible, uh, have someone jangle keys in front of your face for two hours instead. That, that's a better use of your time. I don't know, the performances are good. The effects are sometimes pretty good. As I said, it's very beautiful. God, it, I must be, I, I assume I'm the problem. I assume that the movie is good and I didn't get it. it that's gotta be it, right? 